Welcome back, everyone, for another instance of Philosophical Fellowship. Again, our thanks to the inspiration from Ran Lahav, who initiated this as a way of reviving uh, ancient practices uh, for the group cultivation of wisdom. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to do a reading from John Scottus Eregina. And just to tell you a little bit about him, I'm going to be doing the reading from this wonderful anthology, The Enlightened Mind, uh, by Stephen Mitchell. Um, and John Scottus Eregina, the dates given for him around 810 to 877. He's around at the time of Charlemagne. He um, gains considerable notoriety. Um, he publishes a really important book in the history of philosophy called the Parafusion or the Division of Nature, which is, uh, you know, a high watermark in Neoplonic Christianity. Uh, but unfortunately, it was sort of ahead of its time or out of its time. And he seems to be have dr been driven from court uh, and then uh, declared a heretic uh, in absentia at some point, um, which means he's probably telling the truth. Um, so uh, he, he, he's a very mysterious guy. We don't know much about him other than from his work and a little bit of history around him. But of course, the history is, has been colored uh, against him. Uh, a couple of really good books on him is the one by Deidre Carabine, John Scottus Eregina. And I recommend you start this one first. See how thin it is? It's very thin. It's very, it's very accessible. <laughs> okay. This one is not, not, not so thin. And this, I definitely would not recommend starting with this. Uh, if you get into, if you really uh, get into the Carabine book um, and you, and you want to read the Parafusion, then this is by Sergei uh, Shushkov called Being and Creation in the Theology of John Scottus Eregina. And this is sort of the more, most cutting edge academic uh, scholastic work on it. Uh, of course, I most of you probably won't want to do that, but this might be a good book if you want to get a little bit more into. Why do I like him? Uh, for, he, for me, he is going to figure, and this may strike some of you as a bit odd, he's going to figure um, in after Socrates, because for me, he represents the culmination of the whole project of dialectic into dialogos. Basically, to put it in a nutshell, um, John Scottus, this is why he's often called the Hegel of the ninth century. John Scottus Eregina thought that dialectic was not only a, pro, uh, uh, a process we do individually in contemplation and collectively in discourse, it's also the way reality unfolds. So dialectic works, dialogos works because the dialectic within us and between us participates in the dialectic of reality itself, which he understands as God. Um, and so uh, the idea that in the process of intelligibility and the process of us making sense actually can come into a kind of perfect conformity, make his work, um, well, it, it makes it inspiring for me because I'm engaged in this project, which you're now also engaged in, of dialectic into dialogos. So I thought he just sort of, a, uh, this is a, a little bit of a, a counter, a, a counter jab in defense of him. I want to label him the patron saint of dialectic, uh, even though he was declared an, a, a heretic. Uh, but he's, he's definitely, I think, um, the epitome of uh, Platon, Platonic Christianity. Um, but I think the things he's saying here um, also prefigure somebody we've done, we've read before, which is Spinoza, uh, profoundly so. And you'll see when I do the reading, if you remember what we did about Spinoza. Okay, so that was the reason for the choice, and that's a bit of the background. Any questions about that before we proceed? Okay, so we will take a couple minutes, um, and if you wish, you can turn your camera off um, and your mic off, and then I'll come back. Um, and for those of you who are watching this, please be patient, uh, because what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, doing a basic mindfulness practice, uh, finding the core four, finding your center, finding your root, finding your flow, finding your focus. If you're, if you're unfamiliar with that, please go to my Meditating with John Verveke series and go to the lessons playlist and you'll find the first four lessons are about finding your center, finding your root, finding your flow, finding your focus. Uh, we'll do that, we'll come back and then remember what happens is I'll do the reading. And uh, the point is when I'm reading, I'll read slowly with pauses and you're supposed to be reading sort of aloud in your mind along with me, read in a participatory fashion. Uh, we get to the end, um, and then I will pick a phrase, and we'll do the ruminatio. We'll we'll sort of repeat it, chant like, and we'll go in sequence. 
And let's do, a, let's pick a number now. I'll be one. Tracy, you can be two. Kira, you're three. And Rob, you're four. Is that okay? One, two, three, four. I'm one. Tracy's two. Kira's three. Rob's four. We'll do the ruminatio. And yes, thank you. And then uh, what we'll do is we do the next phase. And let's try and uh, we, we slipped a, a little tiny bit when I looked at the video. In the next phase where we're, we're doing the precious speaking, right? We want to try and keep it to one or two sentences, our initial, right? Because we sort of got into a little bit more, but initial, and, and because this is an important practice. This is, a, this is part of trying to get as much of the nonverbal into the verbal. And if we start unpacking the verbal, we're leaving all the perspectival and participatory stuff behind. So what you're trying to do is convey as much as you can by saying as little as you can, okay? And so you're, you're after, you're almost, you're almost trying to speak as insightfully as possible. Don't force it, but the thing you are doing, the thing that is doing the discipline, saying as much as possible, and then we'll move into the, fi that, the, fi the phase, the next phase, not the final phase, the next phase in which we can speak more at length, usually about four to five sentences, and we circle. And remember, don't, you're not, you're not, right, you're not speaking monologue, you're trying to jazz with other people, pick up and resonate with what they're saying and, and, and weave with them. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to presence Eregina, get a sense of what he, we're trying to create a place in which we're presencing his perspective mutually between us and to each one of us. And then we can, and then we go into the end where we take away and more free flow form kind of discussion. Are we, are we clear about that? So finding the core four, the ruminatio, the chanting, right? And then the precious speaking, conveying as much by saying as little as you can, right? And then, right, the conversation, the more conversational, try to keep that to four or five sentences, jazzing with other people, and then the takeaways and, and then uh, more free flow form kind of discussion, okay? Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna turn my camera and mic off. We'll be a couple of minutes or so and do your core four.
Mr. Overwin, you, when you're ready, please begin to come back gently. Okay, here is the reading from Ergina. Ergina. We ought not to understand God and creation as two things, distinct from each other, but as one and the same. For both the creature, by subsisting, is in God, and God, by manifesting himself in a marvelous and ineffable manner, creates himself in the creature. The invisible making himself visible, and the incomprehensible, comprehensible, and the hidden, revealed, and the unknown, known, and what is without form and species, formed and specific, and the super essential, essential, and the supernatural, natural. And the simple, composite. And the accident free, subject to accident. And the infinite, finite. And the uncircumscribed, circumscribed. And the supertemporal, temporal, and the creator of all things, created in all things, and the maker of all things, made in all things, and the eternal begins to be, and the immobile, he moves into all things and becomes all things in all things. So the phrase for Ruminario that I've chosen is the creator of all things created all things. I'll begin. The creator of all things, the created in all things. The creator of all things, the created in all things. The creator of all things, the created in all things. Creator of all things, the created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. Creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things created in all things. The creator of all things created in all things. Creator of all things created in all things. The creator of all things created in all things. The creator of all things created in all things. The creator of all things created in all things. Creator of all things, created in all things. The creator of all things, created in all things. Creator of all things, created in all things. Let's sit in silence and let resonate with us. Try to do something like in Lectio Divina. 
try to imagine that, not in your head, but imaginally, try and enact the imagery till you feel enveloped and engaged by it. Now let's begin the precious speaking. It's like a conversation that I make that also makes me. I feel my heart slowing down and opening up with the created in me. The sum is greater than all of the parts. In the parts is the greatness of everything. Mm. Feeling a resonance between all things. sense of belonging. Mm. Everything and nothing all in one. Mm. Yeah, there's there's kind of powerful, quiet, that brings people together. It's very warm and dark. I'm thinking of the final line, immobile he moves into all things. I feel at one with every object in my room too, right now. Light and dark, everything, nothing, creator. Mm. Yeah, there's a there's like a life between animals and like buildings that that like we forget about but but that feels very very real to this person so now let's move into precious conversation try to do lectio as you're speaking picking up on other people. So now four or five sentences. So I'm very impressed by how we can, we can exemplify what Eregina is saying about reality in the way we're communicating with each other. Like I, the line between the two is blurring for me. Similar for me, a blurring line and a sense that created in all things. It's like a precious diamond gem that I have in me, that you have in you, that Kira mm -hmm. has in her, that, that 
um, Rob has in him. And that is also in all these things around me. Mm. I'm feeling that blurred line between the creator and the created. Mm. The things that I create and the ways that I am being created. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's the 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 stillness and the energy when when Kira was saying that it was like like this rush of energy coming out of the ocean or something and water just flying up, but it wasn't from outside. It was like from within. Mm. Um. So at the core of the dialectic is this notion of logos. It's both the speaking and the gathering together so things belong together. And it, I, can just, I, can, I can't quite say it, but I, the way what that's happening between us, but it's also what's happening in the world. <laughs> it feels ineffable, but I also, um, sense of my core, I keep feeling it here in my heart, right here, this, Preciousness and a real serenity. And I keep going back to the idea of it create it is created in me. That logos is in me, in all of us. Mm. I also had the word ineffable in me. All of the dichotomies he listed. Mm. And me as a human being trying to mediate mm. those dichotomies and the angst mm. of trying to mediate. Mm. Yeah, I just keep coming back to, I, I really, I feel like it's an honor for him to have talked about how intelligible things were within mm. this this miracle that he's describing and he's not he's not lost in some kind of paradox like he's really mm. uh, confidence is the wrong word but he's very secure in what he's saying um, yeah. which is like a blessing to hear when rob did that there was a shift in that i felt you know the presence uh, of the perspective of Eregina. Uh, uh, he's joining us in the Dialogos. Thank you, Rob. The appreciation for his voice. You made it, you made it palpable to me. I got a lot when Rob said paradox. There was a, it's like, oh yes, and paradoxes usually cause the angst that <laughs> Kira was talking about. And yet, the way that that paragraph was written mm. didn't bring a sense of angst with the paradoxes it was discussing. Mm. It brought a sense of, it's okay, they all go together. I'm noticing how this text is transforming me mm. the um, the angst the paradox my the relationship between them the um the serenity you i've heard described of him uh, mm. of Aragina. something to aspire to Yeah, you can really, you can feel the spaciousness when Kara was saying that, almost like kind of feeling off of what everyone's been saying the last few moments in that he is trying to contain so much, but it is contained. It's not, it's not deadly or unfathomable. 
um, the way something that might have been so personal to other people would be uh, when they wrote about it. Really resonating with the transformation that Tracy and Kira bringing out almost the uh, the healing aspects of this, right? The, the, the way all the tensions that tear us apart have been flipped and resolved into something else. That was beautiful. Appreciate that a lot. All four of us in the last round have been using our hands doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, we're all making circular motions with our hands. And I think that circular motion is, is a, a way of somehow expressing this ineff the ineffability of, you know, it, it, chaos doesn't have to be chaos. It can be magnificent. And as I said earlier, I still keep feeling like, oh, we're all together and everything, not just us as human beings, but the table, the chair. It all somehow for this moment makes sense. Mm. I'm, I think, Regina, the, the thing that I, I feel like he, he's here and he's like, I'm going to expand your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I, I always think of the Grinch when my heart is expanding. <laughs> <laughs> And I keep thinking of the word whole on, which is like a whole, like it's the thing that is both a, a whole, a part and a whole at the same time. And that's what, that's what Eregina seems to be trying to invoke, at least in my experience. Yeah, I like how, how personal we're all connecting to this. And then also how he was talking about like mathematical ideas and almost cultural ideas. And that part is not alienating, nor is it very central even to mm -hmm. the to what's at least presencing right now. Yeah, that's good, Rob. The sense of all of those levels also being brought together. Yeah, there's a playful presence right? that's Eregina here. non-alienating I really like that one mm. but because within the context of, of the excerpt nothing is left out and um, it's um, it's beautifully comforting but it's also it's not just comforting it feels that it's it's a truth that I need to remember Mm. I have a place here. We all do. Mm. I'm aware of like a laughter of mm. the um, the the of the the dichotomies, the paradoxes, the like. Somehow, I get this sense of Eretina kind of having a sense of humor about. Mm. Yeah. About all of it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. you gotta take you gotta take it all. <laughs> yeah, the 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 warmth in, in his thought is is so subtle. It's the the playfulness is so um, there, it's European, but it's not uh, on the nose. It's really interesting, <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's almost no anger now that I'm reflecting on kind of like the, the emotional yeah. layering of what he was doing there. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really um, the coherence without the waste, but with the, the grandeur. It's like, how do you do that so well? That's great. I like the, the way this is happening, where the way we're presencing him, um, the, his serious play is laughter, but the grandeur and also the graciousness of his vision um, makes me think of, you know, that the old phrase of the, 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 you know, the company of the saints. So if he's the saint 
patron saint of dialectic. Perhaps we're, he's keeping company with us right now. I really like the patron saint of dialectic. That's an excellent phrase. <laughs> and I know we're supposed to stick with the subject, but it felt like you were reading Spinoza as yeah. you were reading it. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the playfulness, as Akira and Rob both mentioned that, well, as you were reading it, I was thinking this is the exact kind of thing I would have written on my wall that I can play with every day. Mm. I had the similar thing of I wanted to find that and I was like that that's something that I want to read on a regular basis because there's just something for my mind to noodle on in terms of all or nothing black and white um, everything and nothing those uh all of those things for are, are things that my mind feels a need to contemplate. Yeah, it is interesting how, how that you could contemplate all those different things and every day they'd be different probably depending on what you had done the week before or uh, who you would talk to yeah. or, yeah, they're all, and they're all very relatable. They're not uh, uh, like weird or particularly artistic where you go, ooh, I don't like that. Uh, yeah, and it, that was, it, it is really fun to think about too. It has this lasting funness um, in it as well, yeah. Very interesting, I never thought about this person in this way. So let's, we're, we're almost moving that way naturally. Let's start moving into takeaway and more free form discussion. So now we don't have to follow the order anymore. We can just speak as we wish. Um, so I was very, very um, impressed by uh, the, how quickly the resonance occurred and the, and, the, and the presencing of his voice and the sort of the playfulness of his spirit uh, between us um, and within us. I, I, that, that was really powerful. I really, uh, very, very, uh, like I had this phrase and I, I said at the beginning, like the patron saint of dialectic and it meant something to me, but now it means something much more to me having enacted it rather than just spoken about it. So thank you, all of you for that. I can't figure out why he was called a heretic, but maybe I need to read more. Because he he is he was read as a pantheist um, like spinoza um because erigina's argument was god cannot create beyond himself because nothing can exist beyond god so all of god's creation is also god's self-creation and it's god's self-realization um and that went again a, a very a much more standard two worlds model of creation but uh, as you for, foresaw uh, Tracy, that's very much Spinoza, the nature, natura, naturata, and nature, natura, na nature, naturing, and nature being natured is very much in, in the same thing, uh, same line. The, the very first, uh, as we were going through the, um, the recitation, the recitation of it, um, and that line, the, the, the thing that kept coming into my head was am I the creator or am I the created? <laughs> and, uh, you know, like in, in just in terms of the participant, you know, the, the participation in life and yeah. how those things unfold. And there's an interesting sensation I'm having, which is a, a sense of stillness. And I'm not comfortable with stillness. <laughs> 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 I was like, why am I so uncomfortable? And there's voices like, it's still. I, was like, I don't like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kira has this way about her. She says the things I feel. <laughs> yes, Kira, I'm with you on that. But I so feel that stillness too. You both feel the stillness, but there's an ambivalence towards it. Is that, is that what I'm understanding correctly? Um, I would say it's a, a stillness, it's a, it, but it's a, I don't know what this, like, sort of a foreign feel, like, like, mm, like a, an unfamiliar feeling more so than a, an, an ambivalence. 
for me, it's because I, I'm so accustomed to chaos that I just, when it goes quiet in my head, I'm like, what, where have they all gone? Where are all the voices? Yeah, the brain, the brain tends to prefer predictable unhappiness rather than yes. unpredictable happiness. Yeah. Yes, brilliant. Well, there's a dangerous like double edge to peace, right? If you start to trust peace, you can just get burned twice as hard. <laughs> so feeling really comfortable in something unfamiliar um, can be dangerous. Like I don't think it would be with ancient philosophy, but um, it, out in the wild, maybe if you were a bear or a cheetah or something, you're like, yeah. oh, it's I'm getting too too sleepy here. <laughs> the um... Yeah, that the there's a there's a warning throughout all of Buddhism um, uh, to not 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 pursue a peace that's a contentedness, like but cabbage. rather yes, the contentedness of cabbages. Yeah. You want a you want a peace that's deeply perspicacious and participatory, that's not spiritual bypassing or self indulgence. That's why it was, I think it was important that Rob emphasized the grandeur of the vision in conjunction with the peace and the playfulness. I think if you have all of those together, I think that's a more appropriate framing of what Eregina is trying to bring us into. The, uh, John, as you were saying that, the thing that was coming to mind is like this sense of trying to hold all of those, you know, all of those yeah. different pieces at the same time. And that, that goes back to what he was writing about is boat, you know, it's the, the, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. the polarities and, and figuring out how to be a being that is, you know, mediating all of these different pieces. Mm -hmm. that, that, like, that's what I continue to be kind of feel like I'm being shown through this process. Yes, Heidegger said, Dasein, we are the beings whose being is in question. We are the beings who whose being is in question. Whose being is in question. Yes. Mm -hmm. The idea of the created, the creator and the created at the same time is, is um, especially resonant for me and I, I, I I, I understand Rob's um, declaration that, it, it, you know, it's a grandeur. There was a, I mean, that was an enormous paragraph because it encompassed everything. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, the idea that there is this created, and again, I go back to my heart. There's a, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of peace in that. I don't think it's a sort of cabbage type piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to go back to what Kira's saying about mediating, because I really struggle with that stuff. I, I you know, I, I probably will write that paragraph out and put it on my wall with my favorite quotes. There was something quite William Blake-ish about it too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was feeling. Yeah, to see a world in a grain of sand. Yes, exactly. Um, so I, I don't really know where else I'm going with that, but I'm, feeling that there was so much and it was so well written. What was he writing in English? Uh, I believe he probably would have written this in Latin. Yeah, he was Latin. The, first, yeah. he was a, Latin. First, the first person to translate um, uh, Dionysus mm -hmm. uh, into uh, Latin. He, he was the person that brought Dionysus uh, basically, I think from the Byzantine world into the Latin West. Okay. Um, I think Epicurus, too, some of his quotes are from him. Yeah. And some of his Latin translations are from him. All right. So that, so there's a direct line, right? The, there's a line that goes from Plotinus through Pro, Proclus and Damasius yeah. into Dionysus and then to Ereginus. He is directly within the Neoplatonic tradition. Wow. Okay. It was a very poetic excerpt, John. It, that, that's that's why I'm asking, was it? He, he, I don't want to mislead you. I mean, reading the Paris of Eon is it's it's written dialogue form, by the way. Oh, right. Right. 
but it, but it's not it's not a beach read. <laughs> like you, you gotta you gotta read it the way you read Spinoza's Ethics, right? You have to read it very slowly, very ponderously. Yes. Um, but but it always has that lyrical capacity to it, um, and, and and you see this from Plotinus on, uh, where you get this mixture of argumentation or or very rigorous conceptual work that's being paired with very lyrical evocative prose, and and, and they're and they're seen. So they're, 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 again, they're never trying to just inform you or persuade you. They're trying to transform you and get you to participate in a transformation. Do you think the lyricism comes from the, the writer's attempt to make it memorable? It's probably, there's probably a mnemonic uh, 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 dimension in there. Uh, that he, he's trying to make it memorable. I think he is also very very clear throughout his attitude is not one of hubris. It's one who's on the horizon. He knows he's on the horizon of intelligibility. And he's always trying to speak back into what we can confirm and make sense of and forward to what transcends us and what cannot be, got, what cannot be captured in our words, but only in our sort of full being participation. So he's yeah. always, and th that's how Fisher defines wonder is to place yourself on the horizon of intelligibility. And be able to speak in both directions at the same time. Ooh. The thing that keeps going through my head is, you know, the idea that um, like being in relationship with other people, I am reflecting back, I, I am reflecting other people, they are reflecting back to me in this line of the creator of all things created and all things, that that horizon of like, there's the things that I'm acting out that I don't know that I'm acting out until somebody else is yep. mirrors them back, you know, until until somebody's mirroring them back to me and then trying to make sense of, of what's happening, you know, and, and like trying to, you know, in the, in the process in, a, in, in relationship of, finding the language to describe mm -hmm. what are we doing and um, that, that we don't necessarily know we're doing and how to, you know, it's like, okay, that's what we did. How are we going to do it going forward? All those pieces, um, that, that's what kept getting evoked in me. We have this phrase that captures both of those at the same time. We have the phrase coming to terms with. Mm. Yeah. Coming to terms. We're coming to terms and we're also coming to terms, right? Mm -hmm. We're coming up with terms and we're also accommodating to a reality that's putting a demand on us, coming to terms, um, which is re really interesting because Proclus also uses the idea of terms in order to try to explain his metaphysics. Mm -hmm. One more point, um, when he's invoking creation, he's invoking something inherently dialectical itself mm -hmm. because creation is a dialectic of emergence out of no thingness and emanation from the one, right? And so it's both always emergence and emanation like this. So whatever you're looking at, there's an aspect in which it's emerging and, and, and coming into self-organization. And there's an aspect in which all of the constraints of everything else are emanating into it. All creation is inherently a dialectic of emergence and emanation. So it's not only that there's a dialectic between the creator and the created, there's also a dialectic within creation itself. Yeah, that was so interesting when Kira said that, it made me kind of realize that, that he wasn't just making a claim on reality of like, oh, don't forget the, the big's in the small and the small's in the big, but he's saying like there's this push and pull yep. that yep. is the relationship between like the certain and the infinite that yes. will keep informing yep. each other like perpetually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also within the context of our small circle here, I'm realizing, especially as Kira was just saying what she said, that I only get to discover what's created in me by expressing and listening to you showing what's created in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the metaphor of resonance kept coming up for me throughout all of it. Yeah. Sort of a, a this this kind of it's it's resolving and it's resonance and it, it's it's very powerful. Before uh, I forget, I want to just emphasize uh, one thing, or not emphasize, remind you. Uh, Guy Senstock has also recorded a couple of philosophical fellowships on his channel. You might want to oh, take cool. a look at. Yeah. Cool. 
the the thing I was just thinking about was, um, uh, you know, this is part of the bigger like wisdom journey mm -hmm. type thing, and part of you know the the phrase you can't keep what you don't give away like you, mm. you, know, you have to give it away to keep it like it's in the process of like giving away the wiz you know the like explaining mm. what you've learned to other people that you you learn what it is that you actually know you know that, yeah. that you've actually yeah. know yeah. 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 and then you have people who you know th then you have the situation of somebody mirroring back to you of like well you're not doing that and so and and the you know that that constant evolution process um of of becoming um yeah i feel also that it's in the sharing of these experiences that we get to experience the joy of them i can enjoy them by myself i can enjoy reading a book by myself or a paragraph but I don't get to actually feel the joy of it mm. until I'm sharing it and hearing it from you and vice versa. The, the two things you, that you, the, like what Kira said and what Tracy said, all of a sudden it's hearkening back to the or, originator of this, which is, is Socrates, right? Mm. And that his best, his best learning is when he's teaching and his best answering is when he's questioning and, 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 and engaging in, in the joy with other people. And the serious play with other people yeah very much very much wow that's very cool that notion of the midwife yeah we're midwife living, we're being midwives each other. To, yeah. yeah yeah helping each other become and and that's through like you know teaching each other the languages that we know and teaching the yeah you know yeah bringing the different pieces in okay i'm gonna need to start wrapping it up mm -hmm. um so any final thoughts or word uh, from any or all of you or each of you? I'm going to write it down and put it on my wall, John. <laughs> that, that paragraph, I loved it, it's beautiful. Well, I'm glad you think so. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad that he's coming to light because he deserves to be in the light. So what, what was the name of what you wrote again, or what you read, just so that I can... I, I, I read a passage from The Enlightened Mind. Okay. And it's the passage, and you just have to go to the passage. It's uh, Johannes Scotus Eregina. Okay. It, it, it's obvious, it's from this, but I do not recommend picking this book up and starting to read it. Got it, okay. <laughs> I, I recommend reading the reading at least Carabine's book first. Okay. And then going through this this is a like there's books i read like i've been I'm, I, i've read through spinoza's ethics i've gone through several the, the, the ones i do in lectio every day for myself and after i'm done proclus's elements of theology i'm going to go through uh erigina's text more than i know how to do <laughs> well it, it's just you, you know you do the lectio divina and the and the philosophy of it and yeah. it soaks into you in a way just reading a book doesn't and there's some books that demand to be read that way and not just read. There's lots of books that are, should just be read and they're great for that. But there are other books that have to be, they have to soak them up. Yeah. You can't just read them. That makes sense. Any final thoughts? If not, I'm going to end the recording. Rob, did you want to say anything? No, I was just listening. Like I, I, I get really quiet when I'm around people that I'm so enthralled with. So I was just really soaking up every moment of it and the, um, no, I thought it was fantastic. And yeah, I think he's a really cool philosopher. I have that book as well. And I've, I've encountered him a little bit in my past and, and he does, he writes like in these affordances that like yeah. pull you into his world and then make you want to go stab a dragon with a knife or something. <laughs> um, so I, I was, yeah, this was brilliant. Really for me. Yeah. brilliant. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to end the recording now. Thank you all. So very uh, very much. Uh, what are we?